Hello, and thank you so much for joining us for this session of the Veduary Black History Month Pledge Program. I'm so pleased today to have a special guest with us to talk about his work. Um, and I, I want to jump right into his bio because he has some great things going on. Omuwale Adewale is an organizer with over 20 years of practice and theoretical knowledge. He is the founder of Black Veg Fest and the co-founder of Grassroots Artist Movement, or GAME. Omoale is the author of An Introduction to Veganism and Agricultural Globalism and the editor for the upcoming Brother Vegan, debuting on Lantern Publishing and Media. So that is like really, really exciting. I've been following... Um, you know, your activism on social media, on Wale, and you just have some really amazing stuff going on. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me and inviting me on. I appreciate you and your work, Brenda. Oh, thank you. So I want to jump in um, so, that, so that people, um, you know, in our audience, in our pledge program can just kind of get a feel for what you have been doing um, in terms of your community-based uh, activism and outreach. Can you tell us more about Grassroots Artist Movement or the GAME organization? Uh, so it's an organization, um, well, we started in 2001. And uh, it has a little bit of backdrop in um, uh, Hunter College in the um, late 90s. Uh, I was an artist uh, myself, but I was always was an activist um, prior to that work. So started a club there, Hip Hop Club, uh, then Hip Hop Advocates Club, and then more just, you know, uh, just being politicized and a lot of the movements in Brooklyn, uh, where I was born and raised in Crown Heights. And through that work, that kind of linked me to um, hip hop and seeing all the contradictions that was happening within hip hop. Uh, we understand the misogyny that is happening in, in hip hop, but we also understand, and what some people might not understand is that artists really, even the ones that you are uh, very familiar with, you ended up being in, you know, in debt. So we ended up trying to unionize artists. So we went in and said, hey, um, from a standpoint of trying to organize these artists, we can really help them shape their, um, their viewpoint on how they're having a negative um, impact. Um, but hip hop was also having, you know, uh, some, some positives. Um, Public Enemy, Dead Prez, um, artists like, you know, Lauren Kim, you know, had great messages, you know, as, as well. Um, Tupac Shakur. So, we wanted to, the biggest problem that was happening in hip hop was that music industry was forcing artists to put out a particular message. And people didn't know this. Um, and, and, and we're saying that, well, you know, we'll pay you to do this. And I've met with so many artists and artists end up coming out there and, and talking about it. E-40 has talked about that, you know, as, you know, as well. Talking about things like riches before they even got riches or talking, uh, uh, being married, but talking about how they were this womanizer. And so people don't, and, and it really just spoke about the community, but it wasn't a community, it was just this, this you know, facade. So we, you know, we organized artists and we did, a, you know, a lot of different work, a lot of work, um, you know, Common uh, helped us in 2003, along with Dead Prez and Talib Kweli uh, as well. And one of Dead Prez and Immortal Technique were two artists that were consistently working with us. And M1 was actually, you know, a founder. Actually, Grassroots Artist Movement, the name comes from Erica Badu, um, Talib Kweli, and, and, and M1. And I believe most deaf might have been in on it. So they had a conversation name. And then when I pitched it to my friend, M1 of Dead Press, you know, he was like, well, let's use this name because these artists were basically so busy and couldn't really do the work. So I was organized with all these students and you know, and, and folks and, and, and artists. Uh, fast forward, we end up unionizing. We end up organizing um, doctors uh, to treat folks for free, which was huge. Uh, end up bringing um, tetracycline uh, to Lagos, Nigeria. That's why I changed my name. Um, and had a relationship with the folks there in Lagos, Nigeria. And that's when I realized that they were doing bigger work there because they weren't hit with um, systemic racism. And that's a whole nother conversation that can that that can be had. 
because I was able to go on radio. I was able to go on video on a national level in Nigeria. And I'm, and I'm from, you know, Brooklyn, New York. You probably don't know that based on the name. Uh, but, you know, end up changing my name there. Uh, but we made this link between what was going on in the U.S. and what was going on in not just Nigeria, but Africa and, you know, in, in the diaspora. Uh, so we end up, we wanted to um, organize and unionize, uh, you know, artists uh, to, to help them, you know, support them in their, in their messaging. So it was a lot of unionizing work, a um, lot of organizing of, um, you know, real situations and addressing housing and just connecting with a lot of folks throughout New York, throughout um, the U.S. And this really is the kind of like the, the pretext for um, Black Veg Fest. Uh, Black Veg Fest was, you know, ended up being uh, a project. Uh, but grassroots artist movement was really my work. And my, my 20s was just like, my 20s was an average 20 year old, you know, work. It was just organizing. That was all my work. Um, and I was always um, just always in meetings and end up taking my mom's life when my mom, you know, was a Panther end up in incorporating that work in there. So game is still going through, still evolving. And it's based off the people who, you know, end up coming into the organization and, 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 and continuing that work. Wow. You know, I had no idea. I really was not aware of this whole history of game. <laughs> that is so, so, so very interesting. Thanks. So, um, you know, you're talking about how Black Veg Fest sort of uh, grew out of that. What is your, uh, what I like to call the vegan origin story? Like, how did you get here? Um, say, uh, so 28 years starting um, in just, you know, so <laughs> the interesting thing is, uh, so I'll be 43 in, in October. And um, when I was 15, I was diagnosed with hypertension. Yes. Wow. <laughs> hypertension at 15, uh, which is, and, and so and, and normally when a lot of people end up start teaching or start organizing or doing in this work, that comes from here. Like they're affected by it. Like it's just genuinely like it comes from them working out their own, you know, their own stuff. And so my brother, I had a conversation with my brother. I was, uh, you know, I went through like five high schools. Um, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm smart, but I didn't like to go to school. <laughs> it's kind of rebellious. <laughs> so, uh, but when I was in, I was in Florida and probably at my, I think my fourth high school in my fourth high school. And that's when I was diagnosed with hypertension, I had a conversation with my brother and he, he recommended, you know, you know, maybe, you know, not eating meat. Um, and I listened to my older brother, you know, um, and then just like that instantly, you know, uh, I said, put a plan into place. I'm not going to eat any meat. Um, I think I ate like chicken sandwiches at the high school, you know, for like a week. And then I told myself, like, was, was so disciplined, <laughs> you know, I was still amazed, you know, so I'm gonna do it for one week. And after that one week, that was it. You know, I'm, I'm done with that. And told a friend, uh, and, and, and they was actually inspired about doing it, you know, as, as well for a little bit. And, and, and that's when I, you know, I started, I had no help, mm. literally no help. And, and it, it, it hurt me not having that help. And I see how, you know, that, you know, has that effect on our community, you know, today, when people don't have any, you know, help, I really needed my hand held, you know, to walk through, you know, um, this process, it wasn't going to be easy. So I was eating, like, uh, rice, uh, you know, uh, black beans, not too bad, right. But also, um, it, it was, uh, you know, cornbread, you know, with butter, butter in there, dairy, mm -hmm. was still in there. Um, and, you know, and I had some greens, you know, some canned, some canned greens, you know, and, uh, you know, fast forward, and I'm, I'm doing this and I'm taking dairy out I'm, in, in terms of not drinking, you know, cow's milk, but I'm still eating pizzas, you know, I'm yeah. still eating things with like eggs in there and, and dairy because nobody is, nobody is saying anything to me, you know, about this. People are just impressed. 
people just in, 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 impressed, but I still have a way to go, you know? Um, and so eight years ago, I go vegan. And, and, and it's so real that when people say I would have went vegan earlier, I would have went vegan earlier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, easily, <laughs> easily, so quick. Uh, so eight years ago, um, somebody just, you know, suggested, you know, once you go vegan, you're not, you know, drinking, if you're not drinking the, the dairy, like this, this, that you can, you know, get, you can have, um, you know, uh, vegan, you know, um, options, you know, in terms of pastries, if you like pastries, if you like cakes and stuff like this, still vegan, there's some vegan cakes, you can put these things together. It's when I started to get my hands in the dough mm. and create, that was when I can say, oh, I can make this. You know, of course it was like subpar stuff that I was making, but I was creating my own and people like to, you know, you like to eat what you, cre what you create, right? And then you also like to eat when you grow stuff, you know, on your own too, right? Uh, so that was kind of my, that was my process as soon. And, and I was fighting then. And I had just thought one time and I was like, you know, um, I could have a problem you know, with protein, because that's the idea. And that's when we feed men. Mm. Um, and, and, and so I thought about that, but I still went ahead and said, I'm going to go vegan. And I'm just going to, you know, see, I was sick for like a week, mm. uh, just spitting up so much with withdrawal, just, just everything. I'm like, what's going on with this? This is, this is nuts. This is probably the process where people are in this and they feel like, Hey, I went vegan and I tried it and it didn't work. Right. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> so a little more than a week, you know, I'm like, just spit everything. People just, you know, trying to give me this, so try this and, you know, and try that and, and see if this helps and so many herbs and this and so on and so, so forth. Nothing was really working. It just had to work itself out. The body had to get rid of this. It was just mucus coming out of me. Uh -huh. It's also important to know that I was dealing with chronic bronchitis. Even when I was vegetarian the whole entire time, when I finished like that, I could breathe. It was always tough for me my entire life. I was always an athlete. And I was like, I'm an athlete, but I can't breathe. What's going on? Like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't understand. Maybe I'm just, you know, different uh, in, in, in this way. But I could breathe so easy after that. And I was like, it was such a, of course, after that, that's what people want to start teaching and start educating. Yes. You know, like, listen, you got to try this. And I talked to another vegan because nobody told me this was going to happen. Right. I talked to another vegan. You know, and vegans will be like, that's what happened with me when I dropped dairy. That's what happened uh, with me. Uh -huh. And this, and it's like, wow, you know, so this was, this was my transformation, you know, uh, process and people need to go, maybe go through this process, but it could be truncated so much with information, you know, yeah. with just information and, and support. Absolutely. Absolutely. I had no, uh, no idea what I was doing either. I was, wasn't quite as young as you, but I was in my teens and I had no idea how to transit, you know, like I just decided, I read a book that was like, you know, this is not the right food for us as humans. And, uh, I was like, that makes sense. I'll just stop right. eating animal products and uh, ended up just right. eating just what was in the house. So it would right. be like white rice, canned corn, <laughs> You know, right. and just like canned string beans. And that was what I was eating. You know, yes. <laughs> that was <laughs> like not, every day. <laughs> it was not nutritionally sound, let me tell you. <laughs> so, yeah, I can relate. So, um, so Black Veg Fest, oh my goodness. What inspired you to embark on that particular journey? Wow. Um, definitely my history of going through the process, but more so, um, people were asking me questions. People just was, kept asking me questions like I was some authority. I wasn't an authority. Um, so early, you know, um, and, and, and if they saw me compete and I was doing, of course you're doing, you know, you're going to do very well, you know, early in your career, you know, for some fighters. Um, and, and so I was. And then, and then also I had a physique that people were like, wow, that's, and you're vegan doesn't make sense. You know, um, it just didn't, it, it made fighters ask me questions. Mm. It, it made fighters just continue to ask me questions. Everybody, my, you know, my family. And um, I had a really good uh, transition in terms of 
people being accepting, you know, of me. And I hear other stories, horror stories, where people don't get uh, acceptance, they don't get support, you know, in their family. People were trying to help me, you know. Um, so in, in that sense, in, 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 in a sense of that, they weren't really um, nagging me, you know, about like, try this, you know, try this me. Don't you, you don't think this, you know, um, they can see that it was, it was working. Um, and, and, and I was going to, and, and I'm also, you know, I can be, you know, stubborn sometimes, you know, um, in, in regard, and when I'm, you know, really passionate. And so I was just so passionate about that process and people wanted to know, like, how can we go, how can we go vegan? So 2014, I start this vegan party. I start doing vegan parties, um, with, the, the, the irony is, you know, less information, let people try the food. People tried the food, we would have maybe 30 minutes where we would have conversation just to kind of make it, uh, make some sense, ask questions. People were there who were knowledgeable, some not so much. Um, people were just, you know, being introduced, you know, to the process. And it was just, it was a loving environment. It was like, you, you came there and you were automatically you know, brought in and supported. So people like that in any situation, you can go to a job, you can go anywhere, you know, um, they, you know, depending on what church you go to or, or, um, or, um, or what house of worship. Uh, and if you're invited in, that makes you, that makes you stay, that makes you reconsider any preconceived notions, you know, um, you know, about the isms and, and, and people were just, you know, brought in so much. So, but one of the things that I recognized was that when I started, you know, um, doing talks, and I started doing talks when I was vegetarian, 2013, um, people were just like, I want to get this information, but it's uncomfortable being black when I'm in this space. I can see it and I can also, and it resonate with me. White folks couldn't see that. Couldn't understand that, can't even understand it, you know. But when they could understand it is if they're queer and they're in a space where um, queer folks are really not around or that's when they can understand it. They can understand it when white women go into a space and there's a whole bunch of men there, you know, that's when they can understand it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so black folks would go into these spaces and it really wasn't, there wasn't um, black. There wasn't black folks. So when we, when we, when I thought about um, Black Veg Fest, it was 2013. Um, went to game. Went to grassroots hardest movement. Went to the board. You know, um, talked to the team, and we never worked in. Uh, um, even though I'm the ED, right? Um, we don't work on title. We don't. It's, it's egalitarian uh, all the way through, and nobody care about your titles. You know, it's something you write on the documents, other folks who do care. <laughs> um, right? And so I'm like, hey, can we do Black Best Fest? They're like, nah, come on. You want to do it in the summer? We ain't got time. You know, we can't do it on Mawale. So it wasn't because they weren't vegan. It was because, you know, uh, we can't do it impulsive. On Mawale, you want to do something impulsive? We're not doing it. About 2014. No, 2015. No, we can't. <laughs> so, wow. um, but it, but at that time, this sister told me she was in marketing, does some work in you know in, in parts of Africa. She told me register the domain in 2013, 2014. I registered the domain blackvestfest.org and dot com. Register the domain, and so I'm like, because I told my team like, listen, I got some things. I'm 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 ready though. All we need is like four or five months. Nah, that's not enough time. I'm like, all right, we got six months now. So I was always a little slow in terms of doing that. Uh, but I really wanted to bring people together. So when 2018 came, when, when 2017 came and I, we had like a whole year, I'm like, oh, Mawale, let's make it happen. Oh, you know wow. what I mean? Okay. <laughs> so, okay. so they were like, so we started planning and doing things. And I worked in politics about six years. And so this is, is key and critical to doing that kind of work, to doing a black veg fest, a black and veg fest and outside in New York City. New York City is a different animal mm -hmm. entirely. Um, and, and it might seem like, you know, folks are real liberal. They're liberally racist, right? Um, so I knew one thing and I worked in politics. 
you really got to do some, you got to connect with people. You got to organize, you got to bring people in, you got to understand, you got to master media in, in such a way. And I was always learning, um, getting part of that process. I've been in, working for an elected official in New York State Assembly for six years. So I knew how to do that and I had some contacts. Um, and I said that when I knew Eric Adams was vegan, I said, boom, that's it. That's how we going to get in because he's the borough president. He's the borough president. I'm born in Brooklyn, Crown Heights. He's born in um, Brownsville. It's going to be easy. Listen, that's a brother. I'm a brother. <laughs> Listen, you know, as soon as I had a conversation with him, he was already like, you know, let's make it happen. So I had to organize that, that conversation. And so we had such a great convo. He was like, yeah, and then the watch out for this and watch out for that. So I'm not going to say too much, but he was like, oh, Watch out for these folks and, and watch out for them. He was able to kind of organize folks in the city and, and brought them in. And while I was talking to the city. So New York City will come to your block, to your event. They'll see one thing wrong because there's always things wrong. First off, New York City, you ain't never going to get it right. Mm. And they will shut your thing down just like that. Because there's so many events that's going on and something like New York City is, is, is you know, it, it's, it's just nuts. So when we did have that issue, and I knew for sure um, they had an issue, you know, with Black Veg Press. I don't care if you got, I can have an issue, you know, we still gonna go, you know, we gonna go straight forward, you know, um, with it. And, um, and they would tell you in, in certain ways. So it was so key and, and so critical to have Eric Adams on, because without him being on, without an elected official, being on tied to it, someone who is vegan and is working in the food system, they will shut it down and then nobody's going to benefit. And so it was real key, you know, for me to, you know, um, to do that. And I knew how he had worked in, um, in New York State, you know, um, politics, you know, as well. But we didn't know each other then. But I knew that I could speak to him in a, such a way where he, it would resonate with him and, and, and get it. Uh, but I don't think I had to have, uh, a, you know, political training for him to understand that because I see how passionate he was, you know, in terms of, you know, changing, you know, food systems. Mm -hmm. But that was an inspiration and that was kind of the process of getting there, you know, um, to, to, to Black Veg Fest. And um, I just had to have a lot of partners in, in there too. Um, I had to, I had to resin, I had to build with the, you know, the, um, the, the community. People thought, you know, are oh, you talking about veganism? Man, that's not going to work with these folks over here. That's not going to work. Sure enough, they were wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Same, same experience. I mean, I, I think people just have no idea, like, like what goes on all the, the whole story before the festival mm -hmm. ever like comes into you know into being right because right. even like i didn't know your whole story that this was something that you were trying to push you know ever since 2013 i mean that's that's very inspirational and um and i really appreciate you sharing that you know people just i mean people will just come to your festival and think that's when it started you know right. <laughs> Everything started when when you walk through the door. Like, no, there's right. a whole backstory to this that you have no idea, you know, what we had to go through. So you're so right. You're so yeah. right. So you thank know. you for that. I know you were doing that but um during that time. Y'all yes. came out in 2013. Yes. Well, tw know? it was 2014. 2014. Um, and I'm here to tell you that four months is enough time to plan a festival because that's how long Najee and I <laughs> planned being so fast that first year. <laughs> it was four months and boom, it happened. So you jump right in. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and thank goodness, you know, Black Veg Fest exists. I um you know, I saw a little bit of the challenges, like, um, you know, the, 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 the white folks that were like challenging the idea of mm -hmm. Black Veg Fest. Uh, would you uh, mind talking a little bit about that? Oh, definitely. Um, always. Um, I, I think that it's, it's so key for us to understand what the problem is so we can even address it. Right. And then a lot of times people don't want to hear what the problem is before we, you know, we, we step in. And the, the, the problem was white folks didn't, they, they have a grasp on it, right? They really have a hold on it. And 
they w really want to um, present it their way. And that's what I was understanding, because that's every single year. You know, it's less and less um, there because we've been we've been teaching for we had to do that labor to teach folks, which y'all still owe me money. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like less and less people are like, well, okay, I can, well, I see, okay, well, all right. Because people be like, it's about the animals. Actually, you know, um, when y'all are creating things and, and all types of foods, it seemed like it's a trade show. It's like a food trade show. Mm. Um, so we need to be honest, you know, about so many different factors. Like, yeah, when we vegan, I'm ethically vegan. You know, um, that's my reason for, you know, wanting to really, you know, jump in there. It's like, you know, uh, I start with health, but I get into that process where it's like, oh, I don't really even need to, you know, you know, like eat any of these, you know, these, these animals. So we understand that, but I think they don't, they, they own, they only feel like we only understand things, um, based on our identity and which is just such a. <laughs> misconception uh, we understand things you know through our identity however it doesn't stop there you know um but huge problems you know for us in um with with black veg fest the city was the biggest problem uh more than just the general you know white vegans uh the general white vegans yeah they were saying things you know on you know you know all the time uh and we didn't get enough uh we didn't get the if we got the kind of media that we really, you know, um, needed or, you know, wanted. Like, I really went out to, to these folks. I've been doing events for, you know, 20 something years. So I know how to kind of like stack up and get, for, we really didn't get, you know, a lot of folks. Folks was just like, man, ain't messing with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I ain't messing with no, 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 what, black vegan, you know? Um, so we had a lot of issues with that in terms of getting support. You know, I see Oatly getting a lot of love. But Oatly didn't want to show us no kind of love. I'll just put that straight out. We don't say names. You know, um, <laughs> we didn't get no kind of love there. Peter wasn't giving no kind of love. Peter only reached out to us when, like, it was, it was for their particular campaign. Like, which we were already, like, gung-ho of, you know, supporting, which was, you know, banning, you know, fur. We wanted to ban fur, you know, in, in, you know, in the city. But, you know... Um, and then Peter, like, reluctantly was like, I know they was being coaxed by somebody in mayor's office and then some other organizers was on the ground. Was like, mm -hmm. you got to talk to Black Veg Fest folks. You know what I mean? You should probably, you know, talk to Omar Wale. All right. Because what happened was um, the fur industry was going to City Hall. Um, the fur industry was um, using lobbyists to stop this ban, you know, on fur. And so... Do that, they use black folks. Mm hmm I you remember, know, yep. To, to, to like fight against this ban mm -hmm. and be like, yo, don't y'all, you know what I'm saying? Don't y'all, it's like, it's like, don't y'all Negroes wanna wear, you know, fur? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, make y'all feel special and so on and so forth. And folks, like, you know, they, of course they got paid under the table. So you had these reverends who was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, they, you have to, you know, imagine they were paid under the table and then they would go, and, and they actually lied to the people and to their congregation about where they were going to travel. So it was like crazy. So, so I was on board. So people didn't have to like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, act like they had the solution to educate my people, which I've been working with and doing this work for like a long time. And then, <laughs> you know, with the political background, like, so I just gave them, I gave them one article and they were basically like, Nah, that shit too black. You know what I mean? <laughs> Basically. Then I gave him another article. How about from a different angle? You know what I'm saying? Nah, still, it's way too black. And then what they wanted to, and, and which one comrade did, you know what I'm saying? He learned better later, you know. Um, they wanted to make the connection that you want to oppress people, right? You know Peter don't give a damn about black folks being oppressed. So they'd be like, you want to oppress people and animals are oppressed. Make that connection. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, wait, do white folks do that? Mm. Do white folks need to be like, oh, I'm oppressed? And then, and then like, oh, I go vegan based on that? No, there's so many different ways that people can go vegan. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to be dogmatic. So, so, they, 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 so this was the, 
this was a lot of the problem. White folks wanted to maintain power on it. And I also challenge folks that, um, what's that big event that happens every year, you know, with vegans? Um, it was in California, I think 2018. I think it's, it's maybe annually. Um, but Not the AR conference. The AR conference. Okay. So the AR conference had reached out to us and they was like, yo, you're doing such and such. So I had to challenge them. So I pushed back, you know what I mean? In terms of like, well, well, who's black and who's BIPOC, you know what I'm saying? Black indigenous POC folks, you know, you know, you know, on your board. Like, how have you changed? When you say you changed, like, how have you actually changed? In what way? Tangible. Don't even want no pushback. They don't want, you know what I mean, to, to have a dialogue and a conversation. They just want to be like, yo, trust me, trust me, so on and so forth. And then they wanted me to go fly out there. Yeah, I understand other folks is doing that. Listen, I ain't about to do that. Oh, wow. I ain't about to put my money, you know what I'm saying? So now I understand and I respect other folks' wishes, but check this out. I've been doing this for a long time. White folks not about to get me to come out of my pocket mm. for nothing. They ain't about to get me. You're going to pay me to get up in a hotel and you're going to fly me there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't going to ask you for, like, special treats. I ain't talking about the Four Seasons. I ain't talk. you know what I'm saying? You can put me in a three-star hotel, you know, but I ain't about to go and do no pitch. And you now you telling me I got to fly there after you trying to beg me? Because one person was going through and then say, well, let's send him another email. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? They sent me, like, two, three emails. Um, and, 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 and I was just like, hey, I'm not. And, so, and then it was like, well, maybe we could do this and we can kind of then y'all got to pay for the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not putting out money. The, the fact that I'm activist, I'm doing this work to, to, to upset the system. You know what I'm saying? Your system. I'm helping you. I am raising consciousness. I am changing. When, when, when the civil rights movement happened, they raised that, raised that bar for everybody. Right. Black folks raise that for everybody. And I remind folks that all the time. They raise that for everybody. I don't care what gender you are. I don't care what sexual orientation you are. I don't care what race you are. I don't care, you know what I'm saying, whether you're able-bodied or not. It raised that bar. And it made everybody really think, okay, we got to really, you know, uh, we got to have and create this egalitarian system, you know. So being part of this, you know, and standing on the shoulders of these folks, it would be crazy for me to be like, now nah, I'm gonna pay to go ahead and act, you know what I'm saying, and be an activist. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nah, y'all, yeah, I'm already in debt. You, you gotta pay me. <laughs> yeah, well that, that is, wow. You know, I never really thought of it like that. And, and I've done both. You know, I, I'm certainly at a point now where I'm like, I'm not gonna pay, like I'm not even gonna You definitely pitch. shouldn't be doing like, that. Yeah, no, no like. <laughs> Like I'm not even gonna, pay you. like like you gonna you gonna pitch it to me and you gonna fly me out and you gonna put hey. me up and you know you gonna pay me some money you know, um but in the beginning certainly I didn't have that understanding of the worth of what I was bringing to the table and I think that that's really important for us you know as black activists to get to a point where we understand like they're reaching out to us for a reason. Right. You know, they need what we're bringing to the table. And, you know, and so that should tell us the value of it right there. Exactly. Oh, so, yeah, that's that's powerful. Yeah. Um, so, you know, <laughs> this this pan I, I don't know if the pandemic has has changed things um, for for Black VegFast the way it has for um, like my work, because all of my work was like community based and, you know, mm -hmm. it was like e like event heavy you know so there yes. were like a lot, a lot of like large-scale events and stuff and so i and, and i have noticed um a lot of evolution of black veg fest and so i was wondering like how has it evolved and changed um you know since the pandemic it, it um the the biggest part is um folks coming in so we so uh we've grown and in 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 in, in different ways Right. And in and, and the biggest way was um, having a larger group of people, uh, having more, you know, more folks in there, uh, our, our, you know, our core volunteers. So we all volunteers, you know, our, our core volunteers, you know, growing. And so, you know, in terms of uh, decision making, you know, everybody has you know, the folks that have decision making and we, we challenge. We challenge. We, 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 we help folks, you know, uh, grow. Um, you know, I remember 
being, you know, so apprehensive to that because it's like, yo, y'all trying to take my thing over. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about with like game grassroots artist movement. So I don't, you know, come through that and and embrace and even, you know, push that. Like we gotta bring folks in. We gotta bring. We gotta go because it's hard work. <laughs> you know, it's hard work, especially when when you know when you have a vision and you try and do that work. You can't do that work on your own. You know, people get burnt out. Yes. You know, this is like at the end of the day, it's it's part of movement work. You know, so and then I've seen people get burnt out. So we've um, uh, bring people in. Um, we have a process of folks being able to stay in. Uh, to come in, 100% of the folks have to bring you in, not just Omawale. Mm. Also, Omawale, you know, might be the founder. Omawale do not run it. And people mistake that a lot because we got some folks in the group who are not trying to speak. They're not trying to be speakers. And so sometimes we mistake, people mistakenly, you know, think that I'm doing all this work by myself mm-hmm. or I'm doing this work with just, it's just me, Nadia, and friends. Nah, um, <laughs> When we we got you know, people who organize it and take big pieces, you know, uh, of the work, um, and it, you know, some folks, you know, are more visible, um, you know, getting, you know, becoming, you know, more visible. But have been doing work, you know, uh, like Lori Kim Alexander, you know, um, that's a there's a lesbian uh, sister, you know, um, who advocates, you know, strongly, you know, for queer folks you know, uh, within our group for black queer folks, uh, to be specific, uh, for black, you know, women, you know, uh, within our group. And so we raise, so, so we, we raise up, you know, um, how we grow and then we, 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 we learn how to really like attack different, you know, elements. Cause it's not, it's not a way that we can just, um, focus on one, on, on, you know, one issue, but so, some of the other ways and we've been doing it, like we did Black Vets Fest rally, you know, last year and, you know, with, with COVID, because we were like, how are we going to do this? Like, I don't think we're going to be able to do it. You know, uh, we ended up, you know, getting some resources, you know, working, you know, beyond me was able to send some stuff. Follow your heart is always supportive, you know, for, you know, for the get, for, uh, from the get. Uh, so Ferky has been supportive for a long time, just with me, you know, in terms of just, you know, even um, like sponsoring, you know, my fights, you know, and things of that nature. Um, and so we was able to give this food out to folks for free. What we did was we knew we were going to have a lot of people that's going to come offline. People are going to come. And it's gonna be, so we didn't get people the date. We didn't give people the actual location until the day before. I meant to do it two days before. And then we were like, Let's do it the day before, <laughs> you know, so we get less people. So we end up getting, a, you know, a couple hundred people. And I'm like, all right, that's manageable. Having a system, we had face masks, we had um, PPE, uh, per, uh, personal protective, you know, equipment, uh, masks. We gave the mask out. Uh, we started working with um, Dr. Broner um, and having hand sanitizer, you know, uh, soap, giving those out, making sure we keep clean, we have gloves on. And then we, we make sure we keep distance. We have folks doing you know, volunteer security. We, we work with um, an organization that I'm a part of, Malcolm X Grassroots Movement, which works on uh, self-determination for Black people. They, they, they do our security. Um, uh, you know, sister um, Salah, uh, Cyril, who's been doing this work. And uh, you know, uh, me and her are, are, are Panther Cubs. We're Black Panther Cubs. I mean, our parents, you know, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're Panthers. Um, and so she's, you know, um, she's, that's an incredible leader, you know, um, and, and she handles, you know, security for MXGM, like nationally. And, um, and so she was right there on the ground. Um, there, we, you know, we, we, we try to really uh, coordinate and we, we bring in other organizations, you know, black organizations, BIPOC, you know, organizations. Uh, we bring in space, you know, for, you know, folks who want to just focus on black and queer. And if they don't even like, you know, men, that's cool too. You know what I mean? They got their reasoning. Um, and we, <laughs> you know, we work with that too. You know what I mean? And then the men, you know, who are part of the group, we get them to work their, work their ish out you know, uh, where they get to understand, like, why would somebody, you know, because when, when, when I'm working with black folks and they don't, and they don't like, I mean, when work with white folks, I don't be telling them like, yo, come, you gotta be chill. Like, that's not my position. That's not what I do. I don't do that. I don't work off of, of, of you know, of hate or anything like that. I work off the, 
you know, um, the ability to organize and, you know, uh, my people. And I think that everybody can be, you know, uh, useful. But one of the things that I don't, I don't, uh, I don't tone police, you know, uh, my people, you know, you know, on that, uh, I don't, I, I don't, I don't check them. Uh, certain events I won't do. Certain folks I won't, I won't work with. If I talk to folks, I'll be like, this, how's such and such okay? All right, you know, cool. If people want to, they, they vet me, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a whole process. And so Black Vets Fest is learning a lot of PE. A lot of the PE does flow uh, from me, uh, does flow from, you know, a handful of folks, you know, in, in the group. And we still learn and we still get it from other elders and we constantly just, you know, con continue to grow. Um, so that's kind of where we're going. We, we, we focus on an unapologetically, you know, vegan intersectionality um, uh, position and, and then making sure that um, we, we support our food system. You know, we support our food system. We, we, we have an organizing space, you know, um, you know for, uh, particularly for black people and we create space. You know, we, we make sure we, we tell white folks, especially if the white folks are my friends, they already understand how, um, you know, how we rolling. Um, they already understand that we need space. Um, they, they provide a buffer. You know, um, there's an entire system to respecting folks' culture, you know, uh, and they have the tough talks, you know, so maybe I don't have to have the tough talks. And if I do the tough, tough talks and I'm teaching white folks, you got to pay me. Mm. You got to pay me. And in, in any activist, in, in, I mean, I would say that, you know, for you or any, in, anyone, because people listen to what you're saying, you know what I mean? And so they benefit from that and they benefit with just from using your name, mm -hmm. just from using our name. It makes them, even if it's not like people we saying, I'm, you know, you know, I'm somewhat of a, a vegan celebrity. First of all, I don't like the term, um, you know, celebrity. It's this idea that um, we celebrity like, like, so then anybody who's a celebrity can be listened to. No. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody. Some people who you, you don't know nothing about. And there's a lot of folks who do not know me at all. You know what I'm saying? But those be the, those be the folks that you need to listen to. So um, unless it's strategic, like with Colin Kaepernick, you know, you got to listen to him because he's getting the information from other folks and then bringing it out to you. And he said that if people look, he's getting this information. From he didn't just come to this idea based right. off of just watching you know what i'm saying people think this no it's just strategic that he be the face that he be the one because if there's other person who know a lot more than him ain't nobody know that person <laughs> you know what i'm saying ain't nobody know that person so um that is when so whenever i'm you know i'm speaking anytime you know to white folks they you know saying you you have to pay me you know, um, to get this information because it's valuable information um, to, to, to work with me. And sometimes we have to turn folks down. Sometimes we got to declare, you know, be clear with folks. I done told that to Veg Fund. I done told that to all folks, even if they fund it. And then Veg Fund has funded, you know, us. I'm like, but I'm like, that's small dollars. You giving money out to some folks, you know what I mean, um, who don't do community-based work. How are they going to get the same money as us in during 2020? When we when we literally, you know, it don't make sense. We doing the work. We going to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we giving out vegan food and vegan information because uh, Trump going to come there on Juneteenth. We like, hell no, we got to go there and show solidarity with folks. Can I get some funds? So the white folks who giving funds, we like kudos to you. Continue to do that. To the folks, you know, uh, um, to who, who, who are not, who are just trying to utilize, you know, me sometimes as an influencer. First of all, I'm not an influencer. There's bigger influencers. Let's be real clear about that. However, but the voice is unapologetically black and you benefit from that and getting that message. Because a lot of times folks are like, yo, if I'm a Wally done said it, yo, it's a thumbs up. We rocking with that, you know, and some people recognize that, you know, just like when you speak, people recognize, well, if Brenda's saying it, then, you know, we, we, we jumping on it. I don't care somebody bigger than her. You know what I'm saying? Talking about something else. We listen to what Brenda's saying. You know what I'm saying? The, the work is already vetted. <laughs> right. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, you do a broad range of community activism, obviously. Um, and people who follow you see, like, you know, the, the different pots that you kind of have your hand in. Um, what 
is there like an overall sort of mission or goal that you're trying to accomplish with your work? Um, self-determination for black people. We make the decision for ourselves when we get to a point. Um, and that's a great question because people don't necessarily like ask that. And then sometimes, you know, people who organize don't necessarily maybe, that, you know, uh, you know, think about that. And, and that's OK, too. You know, we figure we, we figuring that out because we in a survival period. But after a while, when you have enough, you know, um, theoretical and, and, and practical training and you never get to this particular level, you know what I mean? Uh, you continue to keep learning and, you know, growing taking things out and putting things in. But it's a t self determination for black people. We make the decision. Like right now, we are, um, you know, I finally, you know, got to a space where we're going to organize and utilize the land and, and, and make sure that we educate the organizers, not we go to some white school, you know what I mean, and they teach us you know, something like most of the stuff that I learn and, and, and that I do, I get this information, not from a school, you know, and it's not school knowledge. It's not school right. information. You know, it's, 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 it's practical information. It's information like school for me was always, it was, it, it was always like, it was supposed to be a pass to get a job. Right. And, um, this is a way that you can get a, you know, you, you can go ahead and get your job. The high school is levels, you know, you go through this school and you get a high school and you got your degree. Okay. You can also get a GED. All right. It's the same thing. And then you can go to a college, you know what I mean? And then as you go up, you know, you, you closer to getting the job that you would like to get, you know, or the career. And you find out like, yo, that's a scam. <laughs> somebody <laughs> put that out. That's not me. That's not my words. You know, somebody call that a scam. I'm like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, I can articulate it, but, um, you know, somebody called it a scam. I'm like, that's exactly what it is. It's a scam because oh, yeah. they know by now it's not something that's that's real. But I want self determination, you know, for Black people that, you know, we get to make the decisions or uh, how we want um, to to live in this world, you know, and um, and and how we want to protect ourselves and, and defend ourselves and and figure things out for you know ourselves. We don't want to have issues and in, in our relationship and and and, and calling cops. You know what I'm saying? We want to be able to. There, there's a system where it was like reconciliation and de-escalation uh, within our community, and it's, it's it's a process, you know, of of understanding. And then Black folks are taking hope because it feels different. You know, like I went to um, Vegan Soul Fest, and it felt so dope. Mm. And I was like, Yo, this is the feeling like Black Veg Fest. You know what I'm saying? You go there like, Oh, they it's it's welcoming. It's you know what I'm saying? You with your people. You building, okay, they making bread. You know what I'm saying? They building business, you know what I mean? And you just buying from each other, you know, and people hospitable. And you want that. People teaching you. They, they, they you know, they seeing you. Um, and it's a beautiful, you know, it's a beautiful feeling. It's it's like, and, and white vegans get it, you know what I mean? Because I love cats, right? And then, like, so when they articulate that, yo, I need to get another cat for this other cat. You know, since cat is lonely, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so they get it, you know what I mean? They try to pretend like they don't understand that, you know, when we talk about solidarity, but they understand it. They try to act like, oh, it's radical. Man, it's, it's radical because we're moving away from this white norm. You know, we got this, you know, this, this white normative, you know, um, that is just, just it don't want to move. It, 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 it don't even want to include, you know what I mean? They want to put up borders and block folks, you know what I mean? And, and then they think they're liberal when they're like, no, nah, they don't have to have borders. You know what I mean? But, you know, but however, there needs to be a process mm -hmm. <laughs> of coming in. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's so. so interesting that, you know, like oppressed people understand community. We understand the need for community. We understand the need for connection, you know, to, to be connected with each other and to, to, you know, lift each other up. And I don't know, I don't know what came first, you know, like, I don't know if, you know, that sense of community was first and then, you know, the oppression came later or, you know, if the, that sense of community came out of 
a necessity for it because of the oppression. Mm. But, you know, what I do know is that at times when we have been isolated and excluded, we've built amazing things, you know, which were then, you know, destroyed (laughs) by our presence over and over and over again. Um, And and I'm finding that that is even happening in our activism, you know, like people like you, people like me, people, you know, around the country and even around the globe, Black folks who are saying like, look, we, the the vegan movement is not um, inclusive of us. Let's create our own spaces and let's create our own um, environments and let's create our own community. And then like what we build is so beautiful every time. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's like people are looking from the outside, looking in at us and saying like, wow, that's, you know, so amazing. And it's like, yeah, because we start from community and Mm -hmm. work out from there, you know, and and we center, we pull people in. We, we We pull them in, you know, if somebody tell me, you know what I mean? Well, we, maybe we need to do this. And you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, queer folks, you know, um, need to have this. I'm like, let's go ahead and do it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You, know, you got black trans and such and such. And maybe you can go, they come and do it. Because when they come to the event, it, the, one of the best things with this brother, this this um gay black man came, he was just so happy. Once he was really happy, then it was like, okay, then we, we, we dope. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if, because, we're not just about making, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, black cis hat folks, you know what I'm saying, happy. You know, we ain't we ain't we ain't complete the job. Mm. You know what I mean? When we start making, you know, other folks who are traditionally more maligned, more marginalized than um than other black folks um within the community, then you know that's the signal of change. Yeah. The same way within the larger society, you know what I'm saying, uh white folks should understand when you extend out to, to, to black and brown folks and become, you know, uh, uh, more egalitarian and share um, resources, that you leveling up, you know, um, the process, more folks are becoming, um, you know, supportive of one another. Like, I don't want to hear, that's why I, I don't want to hear this, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we are brothers and we such and such. You got to show me, but you got to do it on a consistent basis. You do it on a consistent basis and I'll render my, you know what I'm saying, my verdict. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to test you and, 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 and we're going to go ahead and see because it, it's, it's like similar to what James Baldwin, you know, uh, you know was saying. Um, you got to really show me, you know what I mean? Uh, um, you, I, I can't do this based on faith. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All I see is, um, you know, a, a problem with this, with this um, uh, uh, you know, systemic racism you know, affecting every part of my life. So therefore, uh, you got to show me long enough. So folks be like, oh, we did this progress. We did this progress. It's not based off you. It's not based off, you don't get to say what the progress is. Mm-hmm. It's how dare you, you know? Um, yeah. So that's the, that, that, that is really the, um, the, the, you know, the true issue. And we always develop and we always build it. It doesn't mean we don't have shortcomings. You know, it doesn't mean I don't have, you know, um, shortcomings. Um, we constant, but if you first know what the problem is, listen. You you first got a good theory, you are gonna work the practice out. You are gonna keep mm-hmm. you gonna you gonna you gonna keep um, reflecting on you know improving the theory, keep reflecting on improving the practice. You gotta first know what the problem is. That's right. Wow, we are like really going <laughs> going deep into this stuff. Um, <laughs> Can you tell us about uh, Jaleel Muntakeem? So, um, I'm a, I know we've been talking so much. Uh, I'm going to try to... Uh, <laughs> so, but it's so important uh, to, to discuss Jaleel Muntakeem because he's a political prisoner, a uh, Black political prisoner, uh, a former member of Black Liberation Army. I'll explain what that is, what that means in, uh, in, a, in a former Black Panther. That means he was on the front lines, you know, for us. Um, that we, you know... in, in Listen, the same way we understand Nat Turner, uh, and, 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 and he had to, you know, and, and come out uh, and, and, and protect us, and the same way we understand that um, Harriet Tubman, you know, had to protect, you know, as she was, you know, going through, it was no picnic in uh, the 60s and the 70s. It, it was no picnic. You know, we pretend like it, it, it was, you know, uh, black folks got to get out of this idea just because now you could, you could um, 
you, you, you're somewhat compensated, you know, um, for your work, that that's all you needed. To, that's, that's, that's it. You know, um, there is still like significant issues. You still get bopped upside the head and imagine, you know, today, you know, um, George Floyd, you know, you'll still get nailed on. You'll still get disrespected. There's still, um, camp, there's still, um, video that's not shown you know to us where we're being murdered and, and, and killed we still don't know really what happened to um uh, um to sandra bland you know uh, and that still hurts me you know and that should hurt that not hurts our community you know she just had a birthday um so we have to be mindful of that um that folks are doing this work so political prisoners are, 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 are you know rotting in, in, in prison um, right now, you got Matula Shakur, uh, of course, um, you know, uh, who's also uh, um, a former Black Panther. You know, he's also a doctor in acupuncturist. Um, and, you know, you you have, um, you, you know, you got a, a shot of Shakur, uh, who's who's not locked up, but she's in the, uh, an asylum, uh, in political asylum in, in, in Cuba. Uh, so, Jaleel Montaquin did this particular work uh, for f during his teens, uh, where he had to jump right on it, just like you know, in my twenties was just all activism. You know, you're talking, you know, decades later. So during this time, you know, in, in, in his, his teens, he was he was he was uh, caught. He had went underground, uh, you know, and um, captured for doing work uh, through uh, Black Liberation Army, and um, for 49 years, um, wasting away you know, in, 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 in prison. Um, and he was released after a lot of fighting in October. And, and then come November, you know, and we understand how, how political heavy it, you know, it, it was. And, and, and people know about Jalil Muntakeen. His story gets out. He will automatically, he's already, it's already national, uh, but it really didn't get out there just yet. Um, so he was released. In, in, in October and then November came around and during this time he was given all these packets. So you given all these things uh, as, as soon as um, you're released and see so he was only released because of, you know, COVID was such a released and, and, and somebody keep, people want, want to call me. Um, uh, him, he, when he was released, they was giving him a packet you know, and they might give you things to just um, kind of re re enter re enter into society, and food stamps. You know, um, like public assistance. You know, um, just you know, in terms of healthcare, and you know, so on and so forth, Medicaid, and all that. You know, to get back into um, society. And so, also in there was um, voter registration. So through this um, this process of, of signing voter registration, so it was illegal for him to even try to vote. Um, and so accidentally just just filling out the you know the document all the documents and the forms and everything and you know obviously um making that error the republican party uh for, for um, from the public republican party basically um uh, went and um got the attorney general to recharge him mm -hmm. so they arrested him uh he was able to make bail um you know um through um the, the jericho project uh, Jericho movement, and 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 so he he's out now, but he still faces you know possibly being uh, incarcerated again, just off of you know filling out that form, but doing that hero work that he was doing, and the 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 most amazing thing about it is Jalil has a beaming smile, and how I know he sent a picture, because uh, we sent him a package, a black veg fest package. Um, uh, with, 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 with vegan goods, you know, in there. And he had a shirt on, he had a black vest for a shirt on. Um, and I was like, wow. And so one of my comrades who were, you know, um, close and, you know, in, in touch with him, sent that to us and said, don't send it out yet. <laughs> don't share this yet, you know. Um, but it, 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 it was just like smiling after 49 years mm -hmm. and great spirits, just hearing that. And I'm just like, wow, amazing. So we want to get that. We want to make sure that he remains free and on this side, uh, and, and and that he gets the real justice, uh, uh, you know, as long as with our people, along with our people, um, and, and that's a political prisoner that is you know, we 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 need to fight for. So, um, 
he needs to be up there. Same with the names of Umiya, Abu Jamal, um, and, and, and so many other folks. And we, we, we'd say uh, it's a saying that we have um, political presence, freedom, freedom all, you know. Um, and we're talking about, you know, other, other folks as well who are prisoners of war uh, through, like, um, you know, non-filing offenses and, and, and drugs, you know, uh, that perpetrate on our, on our system, uh, on, 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 our, on our people, you know, through this system. And so we say we say free them all because it's really it's just an attack on us. So we got you know so they got to incarcerate the folks who are the who are the strongest who are who are going to you know raise their voices. So that's why you know every single time that I speak, I must be unapologetically black. You know I, I must you know come from that particular space. Uh, it doesn't mean that I come in there you know start yelling and going crazy and articulate, but uh, I. I, I you have to be, you know, I have to be unapologetically black all, all the time and for all black people, not for some. Yes. So are there um, any activists or community leaders who have inspired you to do this work? Definitely my mom um, had been, been a Panther. Uh, I, you know, I could probably just, just center it on my mom. There's so many other folks, you know, uh, as well. Uh, I've been, you know, always for, for, for a long time, just, you know, study so much of Harriet Tubman's and anything that came out with Harriet Tubman, I had to read and watch, I would read and watch because I'm just so, it's like, wow, that kind of doing that at that time, you know, um, it's just, you know, an, an incredibly, you know, you know, uh, amazing, you know, especially, you know, uh, mentally in, in, in impaired, you know, at, you know, as well. And then, and still being such an in, in, incredible leader, and um, and it's just and, and well respected. And even after that, um, making sure that seniors, you know, also was supported. So you know, I try to really follow in those steps, and that's why you know we did Black Vets Fest 2018. Soon as um, January rolled around 2019. We, we, we started doing, uh, you know, senior food demos and going right to the seniors. And let me tell you, when, when anybody says anything about, oh, man, ain't talking veganism, or especially, particularly if they're Black, they don't understand how much of an impact that veganism has, uh, uh, not just animals, but also with the health directly impacting our community and the seniors are they embrace like mm -hmm. when we when they see me come in there and sharing food you know with them um and teaching them how to, they are so they are like thank you thank you for sp sharing time and spending time your own money we know you ain't get we know y'all ain't getting paid we know the um department of aging is not paying y'all you know um and it's just like, it resonates with them so much. So we, you know, you have to do that work that was laid before. Not everybody's gonna do it, not everybody can, but the folks that, that can do the work, do that work as, as, as effective as you, as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. You know, but my yeah. mom, uh, Cleo, <laughs> Cleo, Your push, mom. Push, push, push. yes. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, so you have a lot going on, you, you know, you got, you know, book and, you know, the, the stuff that you do online and there's classes and, and, and workshops and all this stuff. Um, and then you have like a family, you know, <laughs> like, and so I'm just wondering, like, how do you balance all of those things in your life? Wow. Um, I would say I don't do a great job at that. <laughs> That's probably the, the shortcoming you know, that's a shortcoming for life, but you know what? Um, that's the shortcoming for life. It definitely will. It will. It will definitely hurt your uh, relationship, especially if, if folks are not, you know, doing the movement work with you. What I always have to I come back to, and which is so key, is if my children love me. Um, and that's the only thing that really centers me and brings me back. If I, you know, if I'm doing this or I'm doing that, I would bring my kids with me to all you know, all things. And, and my eldest, when my eldest was like, uh, some days ago, uh, was like this, dad, you still coming this, this month? I was like, that's right. I gotta go this month. <laughs> my baby want to see me. And when your children want to see you, when your children love you, that's all you need. That is the most, like, that'll really have you like, that's when you really collect yourself. At the end of the day, you recognize, you know, um, you know, what really is at stake 
mm. you know, um, so much. And, and they, because they see you busy. Like, let me see, how much time you going to put to that? And then one of the things that happened at Black Veg Fest, 2019 was so was so great for us, uh, but it was particularly great for it was great for me, um, uh, and, and for you know um, I didn't know if I, I I didn't even ever think that I would really care, but my daughter, uh, my my daughter's um, uh, uh, uncle, you know had 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 came over. He, he lives in New York, and um, this course is on, on on her um, her mom's side. Um, came, you know, to Black Veg Fest and said, I never told you, you know, how much, you know, I was, I'm proud of you mm. that all these years, you've always maintained a great relationship. You know, uh, it's such a low bar too. I will put out, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you should be able to really <laughs> want to maintain that, but it's true, you know, but, but the fact that, but one of the things that was tough was that you were able to, you know what I'm saying? You made sure, you know, you because it was tough to, you know what I mean? Like travel, you know, because I was low income the entire time. Like, I don't care. I'll put my last money to go get my baby, you know? Um, and, and and it was even at a time when I, I it was like, uh, she can't fly by herself. Well, damn, that's going to cost me money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So there's like two more flights that I got to add in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> so, uh, so I'm like, yo, I, I got to I gotta make sure I have bread just so my... And, and then during the summertime, when she was growing up, I would stop everything I was doing. I was like, yo, I got to slow a lot of this stuff down with my child. When I was going to an event, when I was doing events and I was doing some, you know, preventing youth incarceration or do, building youth leadership, people would ask me to go ahead and, you know, and, and call. I remember one time, um, his brother had asked me, I forgot where it was, I think it was Midwest, you know, somewhere, and uh, to come over there and, 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 and do a workshop. And I was like, can, you know, can you put money in the budget, you know, for my daughter? And so if you don't have children, that shit don't hit you the same way, mm, mm-hmm. you know. If you don't really, if, if, if especially if if, if if you not on my level like that, and when you loving your babies like that, like you like, listen, my time with my child, you know what I'm saying, is limited. You know what I'm saying. So I'm having summers, I'm having you know spring, and I'll have like, you know, like the, the winter recess, right? Um, so. Not one time am I going to be away from my child for no event. I don't right. care if it's only two days. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had to be like, oh, you ain't got it. All right. Well, I can't. I ain't going to be able to make it. He was shocked by that. You know what I mean? I'm like, what you shocked for? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to, like, you can't scrounge up the money. You are another black man asking another black man, you know what I'm saying, uh, who has a child. You're not going to listen. I'm like, if you don't understand that, then, you know, I, I didn't want to go. So I didn't even go into it, you know, with that. But that would that that would underscore, you know, so much. And my and, and the weird thing is my child see this. Mm. It comes out to her when she she's at the same question. And it's always the daughters. <laughs> so it's my daughters. Um, both children have asked. And, 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 they, and, and in the way that the, the way that the why the reason why they asked this uh, and I totally understand, you know, why, the way they present it. And they say, Dad, you so busy. You know, how, you know, it's like, how do you do it? How do you make time and center or bring us here? You know, um, they, I take you with me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's simple. I'm going to take you because one of the things that I was doing is keep for parents you know, uh, who are organizing, who are going to come up in the movement, but it might be a little easier now, is that I make space. I force folks to make space for parents. Yes. I worked with a lot of, um, you know, sis- it, of course, it was a lot of sisters, you know what I mean? They would have their children at the event. They would be organizing. And we have meetings and so on and so forth. Listen, you got to make sure there's food. You know what I'm saying? They got to be bring some, make sure there's people to watch the kids. You know, there's a lot. I go off top. I'm like, listen, I was good at this. I was bringing my baby to, you know what I'm saying, to, to school with me. You know what I'm saying? About, ain't nobody got, I would be upset when, when, when some sister would try to explain to me how to do it. Like, 
I'm a, I'm perfect at this. Uh, <laughs> this is one thing I don't need no help. I don't want no help. You know, what I mean? mm. you know, at this, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm change it. I'm gonna do this. I'm, you know what I mean? So it's like, you got to wove that commitment in and that might change the work, but it won't change the relationship with your child. And that's the thing that you really need. Cause when I see some dudes later on in life and they had a relation with their kid and they trying to reach out later on, I could almost feel their pain. Uh -huh. They like, they like, damn, when they chill, when they, when your child reject you, what, what you living for? Yeah. You know and what I, I'm saying? And I've been that child who, mm -hmm. you know, whose father tried to reach out later and, and I rejected that. So I mm -hmm. can, you know, feel it from the child's perspective. It's just like all those years, where were you? You know, mm -hmm. like I needed you all those years. Where were you? You know, so mm -hmm. I can really, you know, appreciate and respect what you're saying right now, because that's so important. You can't get those years back. You right. know? And so um, before it gets too heavy. I'm going to go ahead and ask you about Brother Vegan. Okay. I am so excited about this book. Yes. Yes. Um, I, first off, I'm, I'm, I'm terribly, I was terribly um, happy just to represent um, and the, the fact that they thought to ask me. I'm like, who the hell am I? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't get crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't get crazy. I'm like, wait, let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, like, like. I'm not a big name, you know what I mean? So um, I was I was very, um, I was very happy. I felt very honored. I felt very honored, you know, uh, by that. Uh, Cause I remember, it, I remember, you know, a sister, you know, bringing sister vegan to me, you know, oh. uh, you know, and I was just like, you know, and I, and I saw the book and I was like, yo, it's the, okay. All right. Um, and, and I saw some folks in there, you know what I'm saying? That I actually knew. You know, and, and I know that, you know, um, Breeze did not live in New York, but it was a sister, you know, in there. Well, New York. I'm not going to say her name because I don't think she's vegan anymore. <laughs> I don't know um, if she went back, you know, um, and, you know, but even then, her points, the, the, the sister's points in, in, in the entire book is so incredibly profound um, to have that geared to black folks. I mean, she's a visionary. So uh, Breeze was such a, you know, visionary. So I was, you know, so I was delighted. So I know what I was going to do in the book. Cause I knew I was just going like, yeah, we're going to make this so black, you know, we're <laughs> we going we to make this so revolutionary. I mean, like, uh, but the thing is, it's, it's, it's also, we mono, we're not monolithic, even within black men, you know, space. We don't all, you know, think, you know, necessarily the same. Um, so there is, but it's beautiful in that we tell in our own stories and we have so many of these stories and it's so great that folks get to see these fathers you listen to what stick is talking about if you hear what um my brother um lord cannon is talking about this is a hood dude and so i fought to make sure he was in the book mm. because this is the problem we don't put the hood mother you know, and, and, and folks like, like, I'm a hood dude. Don't get it twisted in terms of what I'm saying to folks. You know what I mean? You know, um, and, and, and I won't even define that in any case, <laughs> you know, uh, but that's a, that's a hood dude. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, 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 and the way he speak, listen, he a smart dude, but also, you know, he a hood dude. Like he don't give a, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. Uh, but he come from a, such an angle that he's educating, you know, folks. Um, like, I'm not a Moor, but he's Moorish. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't no more, and, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, I don't split up, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the case may be, y'all black to me. Or y'all could say y'all more as well, but we all the same. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, we call ourselves different names. But that brother needed to be, you know, in the piece. Um, Kez, um, you know, a black trans man needed to be in the piece. Mm -hmm. If you lit, when I first was just, everything that they say is profound. Not everything I say is profound now. You know what I'm saying? I feel like everything that they say is something profound. Even when it's short, mm -hmm. you know, even when it's short, making incredible points. So I said like, listen, we are gonna have to make room. 
You know what I'm saying? We got to make room. I know folks, you know, are going to be like, I don't know, but the trans man, you know what I'm saying? So on and so forth. But I'm like, if you got your ears open, you're going to learn something beyond and you're going to see something beyond how folks identify. You understand? Uh, you, you understand when you listen to the material and every single thing, like people like, listen, even when folks are black trans, they don't just, you know, just, just see, you know, and understand just black trans folks. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the same thing as, as, as being black. Now, now all of a sudden, I can't understand and, 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 and learn and see what, you know what I'm saying, these white folks are talking about. You know what I mean? We get, you know, uh, uh, like, oh, they ain't gonna understand, like, oh, this sister over there, that's her sister. She, she don't understand what the dudes is doing, you know, what's going on with that. Listen, I'm telling you, you know, because uh, it, it, it's so dope. And um, when I heard um, that, when I heard them say, um, just because people uh, feel like they feel like, you know, attacked, it doesn't mean that somebody actually attacked you. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. When people feel like, you know, hurt, you know, or people get critiqued, you know what I'm saying? And I first heard it from, from them. I heard it recently too, you know what I'm saying? But when they said it, I was like, mm. you know what? Oh my goodness. You know what I'm saying? It blew, but I already had heard so much and I already, we already, you know what I'm saying? was like, oh, got to put you in this book. You know, they had put, um, and, and they're so dope that they went to Black Vest Fest, right? 2018 and um, they had critique. But they had leveled the critique in such a way, it was easy. It, it, it didn't take me to understand it. It took, you know what I'm saying? It would take anybody to understand it because they first, they loved it. Mm. They were like, hey, we just, you know, we, you know, we could just, you know, discuss more about the animals, you know, um, you know, and, you know, as well. I'm like, that's a great point. Well, thank you for that information. That's helpful. People don't understand that critique. You know, it's actually helpful. It actually en enhanced your, and this is why corporations pay so much money for it. People don't, people, people don't know um, this, but but just so it was so important. So we we had to have them, you know, uh, up on the stage on the main stage, you know, in 2019. Mm, nice. um, because and and, and and to discuss these issues, you know, uh, and and really get out because one of the things that I'm I differ on with with a lot of um, with 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 some black folks uh, at least, and when we talking about. Um, addressing you know white folks and getting white folks to understand their privilege is i want you to listen to what i'm saying i ain't about to tell you to go read no book you do what i'm telling you to do uh, you go ahead and read the book you might get a whole nother understanding because i've seen it because look why are we still in the same situation <laughs> you, know what I'm <laughs> you know what i mean you know when, but when you hear from me because i can check you if you close to me you know what i'm saying i can check you and i can understand and i can also watch you over time you know, I've seen some folks, they look like they're making sense. Okay, you're on point. And then I catch them like, nah, let me fix you out. Let me fix you, you know what I'm saying, a little bit. It's the same thing that happened with men, you know what I'm saying, uh, and, and, and women. You, we might be talking like we making sense, but we make errors. We're going to make a mistake. Can we be, are we here for the information? So, um, so that's dope, folks. And of course, we got a bunch of big names. We got some, you know what I'm saying? We got Eric Adams in there, you know what I'm saying? You know he's going to be a mayor next year. Mm, nice. You know, <laughs> you know he's going, you know what I'm saying? So we, you know, we got him, you know, we got um, D, uh, DJ Etef, you know, um, also, um, um, AKA DJ um, Kavum, um, yeah. you know, um, so uh, Dr. Milton Mills, you know, in there. And then we got Deb Prez in there. And I mean, like Deb Prez is like, you know, you know, stick and M1. When I first heard them rock, on stage, I was like, nobody rock like this. Nobody even say any of the stuff they saying. Their album is still to me. That's a number one. Uh -huh. That's that's that, that was my favorite. I, the, to, to be organizing with them, I done been organizing with my the fa my favorite artists. Wow. I done been working with my favorite artist. Stick then put grassroots artist movement in his first book in two thousand four. Uh -huh. The art of MCing. Like if you looking for a union going to the book. So that's my receipt in terms of my work. 
So when folks come, I'm like, y'all just gotta go to that book right there. I'm gonna just y'all just go and see, you know, see six book, you know, um, like the because they were doing the work that we talk about, and they were also performing and doing the artistry. Mm-hmm. So that's why I always respect, you know, um, these dudes, and they always and they talk about fatherhood in such a profound way um, that is so necessary. You know, and the artists got to talk about that as well, because it's like, you know, with, is there a disconnect? Because, I, I mean, obviously, you're performing, you're doing all this stuff, um, but how are you doing in terms of your fatherhood, in terms of you being a family, you know, um, you know, man, you know, as well? So we, 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 we're wrestling with a lot of things uh, as well. Last thing I want to say about that, when we talk about Black men, I don't look at it as a group unless it's, 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 it's for us to be accountable. You know what I mean? I don't team up with dudes. We don't, we don't, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we not a, we not a group, you know what I'm saying? And like, that's a group. I see oppressed groups and there's a reason for women to band together and to, uh, and, and to organize and, uh, and, and to empower themselves. You know what I'm saying? Because they have lack of power. Same thing with queer folks. For men doing that, that's only for us to understand our issues, our grievances, and also to um, watch how much power we, we, we are taking um, with, in our relationship with other genders. That's the only, it's just to be a, a, accountable. And we gotta be reminded with this all the time. I am not perfect on this. I can articulate it perfectly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we individuals at the, right. end, of the, at the end of the day, you know? So. Yes. But y'all gotta get that book. Uh, it's best for folks to get that book from me, um, but honestly, it's everywhere. It's it's going to be everywhere. I'm happy to just for, first, you know, what I'm saying that that uh, in my second book, to to have a book that actually I don't have to do all this work. I didn't have to self publish. I don't have to kind of mm. just do this. There's folks behind you that's going to put it. That's it's a it's a world of difference. Yeah, a world of sure. difference, and, and and definitely appreciate you know what I'm saying lantern. Um, for just let me allow me to be unapologetically black. I'm like, am I gonna be unapologetically black? Am I gonna do? Are y'all gonna stop me from doing such and such? No. Well, let's go. It's green light. Let's rock this thing. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> so. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, so so I'm sure that folks, you know, who who are watching this are going to want to know like where they can find you, how they can follow your work, how they can support your work. Um, best place to go, uh, especially support my work. Cause I'm starting to think now, a lot of times I, I mean, I used to think, um, you know, I don't want to put myself out there. There's other people, you know, I've been in some places in the world where, yo, they, they, they struggling. It, it's harder there. And then I see them still doing better work than I'm doing. Mm. And so that don't had me like, well, how you able to do this? And you ain't got, you got half or nothing, yeah. you know? Um, but over here, it's a struggle too, and I had to articulate to, to, to you know, to four. I remember in 2005, uh, Hurricane Katrina, that hit folks in, in you know, uh, in Nigeria. They was like, "Yo," they literally think I'm telling you, in parts of the world, think that some of the streets are paved with gold. Mm. You know, they literally have thought they literally have thought that, and that's what caused the media over there. And I was able to see their media, and I see what we were sharing with them over there, and I was like. Oh my God, y'all are really racist, mm. you know. Um, so and, and and so they totally understood when they saw people floating, you know what I mean. And the government just like, man, you know, it'll figure itself out. You know mm. what I'm saying? That's how they they saw it. But um, I'm now I'm, I'm I'm over that now. Y'all gotta support me. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm like support me at will right now. It'd be tough, yo. <laughs> so Patreon, check my Patreon. Become a Patreon. You know, that's my, that's the, if you want to support activists, support the Patreon, um, you know, uh, dot com, patreon.com. Y'all know how to get there. Uh, Omawale, uh, a day wale as one word. Uh, same thing, uh, omawale.org. Uh, if you look in, you know, lessons you want me to, you know, uh, teach or, or train, pay me, you know, uh, pay me, um, the, the, you know, the pay me the right money. Now just, just, just pay me, you know, pay me something that's, that's equitable. Um, there's some folks who didn't pay me before back in the day. Um, uh, that's now it's like, yeah, I know, you know what I'm saying? We ain't pay you right. You know what I mean? Um, uh, we ain't really, you know, 
and 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 I and, and, and I understand that, you know, just you know, you own that, you own that, um, and and you're willing to um to pay activists. I don't care about you know, pay activists, pay community organizers, pay us, you know what I'm saying, first. We're changing, you know, and, and we do this automatically. Like we don't, I don't want to have to fill out. I don't want, I don't like filling out grants just so folks know <laughs> I've been an ED for a long time and I've been rejected more times than I've been approved. You dig? So, um, pay me just be, just come out and be like this. Yeah. Let me just I'm gonna write this check to you. Here you go. You know what I'm saying? Some folks do that. A lot of folks don't. And, but I, I but people will be surprised that people will support you when you just be honest, truthful, unapologetically black. I don't know why millionaires are not just coming out like this. Cause if you got bread, like I don't have like nothing, yo, you know what I'm saying? I don't have nothing. Don't have no ideas you know, about what I got. I got nothing. And, but if I had a million dollars, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like we would be, I probably have nothing after that. Cause I'll be putting it into things to keep people <laughs> exactly. organizing. We put it back into, that's what we do, right? Yeah. We put it back into the work, you know, yeah. all the time. You know, so listen, just, you know, uh, pay us, just, just try to get to us. We're we going to show you how to do it. Uh, definitely we'll do trainings, uh, but get my, but, but it's not just my book. It's uh, dope uh, contributors, you know, in the book, but definitely uh, Bree's getting some royalties off that. I'm getting some royalties off that. Uh, and, um, you know, so, you know, support that support that you get it from straight from us we're gonna get the royalties and we also gonna get the book sales you know so you go buy from me um i don't know if i want to say that because then that's just a whole bunch of work for me <laughs> <laughs> it'll be worth it <laughs> right 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 true true yeah, wow okay wow thank you so much omawale i mean this has been such a pleasure the time has flown by um this is excellent questions by the way too oh. thank you so much for capturing <laughs> You know that that's like you took time you yeah. took time sis you do your work you do your <laughs> thing right here you know what i'm saying i see it from a different angle now you know what i'm saying you be doing your work right now people gotta you know what I'm saying give people their flowers you know what i'm saying like now i'll be waiting till later on you know what i'm saying <laughs> well, so i thank definitely you appreciate your work for acknowledging my work i mean that, that's <laughs> not often that that happens you know people just think that it's magic or something i don't know <laughs> But uh, yes, yeah, I, I just appreciate your time. And um, I can't wait until folks are able to watch this and learn so much from, you know, from your wisdom. So thank, thank you, you again for being a part of this. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. Thank you for being a part of the Veduary Pledge Program. And we will see you at the next session. Yeah.